Hello and welcome to another crypto tutorial and in today's video I'm going to talk about Polkadot once again I'm going to look at the main wallet for Polkadot which is Polkadot.js and you'll be seeing a lot of Polkadot videos from me on this channel in the coming days I'm going to try and get a video out every day so if you're new here my name is Claudio and this is Cryptosh Chain the channel where I do crypto news reviews tutorials and interviews so please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to like the video as well of course if you enjoyed it now let's take a look at Polkadot's wallet. So again, the link can be found in the description of this video and I'll also pin it uh, in the comment uh, just to make it easier for you to simply click on it directly. Uh, Polkadot.js.org is pretty much the link here. And this is like the main wallet, right? This is the wallet where you can develop. This is the wallet where you can stake, obviously store your, your dot, your Kusama and anything else that you're going to have any kind of parachains uh, that are going to be deployed on Polkadot uh, will also be storable um, their tokens will be storable in this specific wallet so I'm going to show you how it looks here so basically in order to log in here like or when you when you first log in right if you don't have the browser extension I do have it uh, for Polkadot which again the link can be found in the description of this video for that too it can become a bit complex especially if you're new to crypto because there are just so many wallets out there um, this one is more developer friendly by the looks of it as you can see here mo most of them are more user friendly they're colorful they've got like large buttons that you can click large tabs and so on this one's more for like techies right as you can see here there are many many options i'm going to try and go through some of these options to simplify it for you because you're only going to need to use a handful of them right unless you're going to want to take part in more actions but uh, if you're new uh, and you don't have an account you just click add account you give it a name you get an address assigned to you and you get the mnemonic seed assigned to you in advance uh, you set the password there's an advanced creation option as well if you want to click on the drop down there and then you click save and then it generates that for you of course make sure you're writing down this mnemonic seed uh, on paper because you're going to need this again to unlock your account otherwise you're going to lose your funds if you lose this seed it's your only access to this account so you cancel that i've already got two accounts here so i don't need to create a new account but uh, some of the options i want to talk about i'm going to start off with the first option here which is on the left hand side so here we're in the polkadot wallet as you can see uh, if we go here actually let me show you something click the drop down now uh, in the live network section we can see here live networks which means it's mainnet uh, real money basically real crypto uh, we've got two different options here two different radio buttons hosted by parity and hosted by web3 foundation now apparently it doesn't matter which one you select or you switch to uh, if you hold dot in your wallet you're gonna be seeing them in both of these so it doesn't really matter right it's more from a developer perspective now there's kusama which is the test net for uh, polka dot in order to get to it you have to select the switch button after you select the network so if we go to switch here now we can see that it's initializing the connection okay and here we're in kusama now so for example let's say I had some Kusama on an exchange and I wanted to uh, get it in my wallet. All I had to do is basically receive it by going to my extension here by clicking on it and my account and here I can see my address. I basically copy this address, paste it in the exchange withdrawal address, uh, withdrawal section and then I'll just send the Kusama straight to my wallet and they should arrive in this specific wallet. Uh, so that's pretty much how it works here. This is the basic aspect of it. Uh, let's click here and look at the other one. So we've got Centrifuge here. We've got Darwinia Crab. All of these are live Kulupu as well. I, I'm actually quite interested in this specific project Kulupu. This is actually tradable at the moment. It's on some very, very bad exchanges though, right? So I need to do more research on those exchanges before I get any Kulupu because I'm a bit concerned. I, I think I need to join their Telegram group, ask them a few questions, see what the admins have to say. But the price is overextended at the moment but anyway that's not the purpose of this video it's just to tell you that Kulupu is also here uh, test networks now we've got Akala which I've been speaking about quite a lot in this channel Akala Mandala is their app they're still on testnet at the moment a lot of people go in their telegram group and they keep on asking when token sale when token sale when mainnet well until Q4 of 2020 is not going to be available 
So that's October, November or December. That's when they're preparing the IPO details. And by IPO, they don't mean an initial public offering. They mean an initial parachain offering because this is how you can uh, vote for a parachain to join the network on Polkadot. And we'll be looking at that option too. And then we've got the development option here, which is your local node if you want to set that up as well. So let's move back to Polkadot here. Switch back to it. Okay, so here we've got the accounts, we've got the address book, we've got claim tokens. So if we go to claim tokens uh, and I select the Polkadot account, I've got two of them. I click continue. It's asking me for the Ethereum address from the token sale. So this is if you took part in their ICO and you want to claim your Polkadot, this is what you do. You type in that Ethereum address. Obviously, you're going to need to sign with that address and then you can claim your tokens or your coins because Polkadot, uh, the dot, dot tokens, even though they're saying dot tokens, they're actually coins, to be honest, because they are on their own blockchain. Now, um, let me go here. The transfer option is basically a way for you to transfer dot uh, when you want to transfer them out, right? Uh, say, for example, you want to send to an exchange or you want to send to a friend or to another wallet. This is where you do it, okay? So if you're used to other cryptocurrency wallets, this may seem a bit weird to you. It may seem different, uh, but it looks more techy, right? It's uh, it's more like for developers rather than for the usual folks that are not so techy. Uh, so you get some information here about the beneficiary having access to the transfer fees, of course, uh, when the transaction is included in the block and so on. And here we've got a drop down, uh, which gives you different options, nano, micro, milli, kilo, mega, all these different ones right so dot is the one that you have to select um, we click cancel because we are in the dot wallet of course here we're in polka dot right we're not in some other parachain there are no parachains at the moment now the explorer option which is under network here this is a different tab here we can see all the different blocks and how fast they move uh, we've got the epoch and here we've got all the different blocks right we're in block uh, 1,323,234 it's changing very, very quickly. I mean, this is moving fast. Uh, the staking option, this is the one where everyone is going to be on, right? Everybody wants to stake DOT right now. Uh, and some people don't want to stake DOT. Some people just want to get DOT and prepare for those parachain votings uh, because they will get the specific tokens when they vote for a specific parachain. For example, with Akala, if you vote for them to be able to bond the parachain to live or to mainnet, um, then you will get ACA tokens assigned to you. However, your DOT will be locked for up to two years. So obviously, Akala want to get the parachain slot for two years, which is the maximum. And again, if you're not sure how that works, do check out my Polkadot review video where I actually mention that uh, directly from their website. I take a look at the website and I talk about it. So here are all the different validators. You can choose one of the validators, for example, that you want to stake to. And it's asking me, what do I want to send? So I can send, uh, click here. So here I can send funds to the specific validator. Okay, so it does tell you the transfer balance will be subtracted along with the fees from the sender's account. The beneficiary will have access to the transfer fees when the transaction is included. If the recipient account is new, the balance needs to be more than the existential deposit. Likewise, if the sending account balance drops below the same value, the account will be removed from the state. So here we can see the existential deposit, the minimum amount that the account should have to be deemed active, one. So we should of course send more than one and we should always make sure we have at least one in order to keep the account active for staking. Now staking is for um, 28 days on Polkadot and seven days on Kusama. So once you send to a validator, you cannot get those funds back until 28 days pass. So that's something for you to keep in mind. Now, which one pays the best? I'm not sure. All right, we've got the commission here, which is 100%, 100%. I'm not sure how much they pay. I think it depends on the transaction fee. So I would recommend you check in their official Telegram page, ask people around there to see what they have to say, people that have actually staked with different validators. Uh, they may be able to tell you, or maybe even an admin might be able to help you with that specific uh, question. Now the parachain section here, which is also on their network, if we go to that, here there are no parachains, obviously not, nothing registered, but this is where all the action is gonna happen. 
just think of parachains like if I was to compare them, just think of like the Ethereum network um, and, and, and associated with Polkadot. And then think of the parachains as the ICOs that were deploying on the Ethereum network to those smart contracts, creating those tokens, right? Where in case uh, instead of uh, instead of those ICOs, we've got the parachains on Polkadot, which are actually creating their own blockchain, but it's configurable. Now the blockchain is using, of course, the substrate framework tools, which are on the Polkadot ecosystem. So it is a bit different, but it's configurable according to the parachain's needs, according to the project's needs, right? So if the project is, like, say, an identity verification um, project like Ontology, for example, who have their own blockchain, they should be able to use those tools that are available to them within the Polkadot ecosystem and have a parachain, right? So this is just an example. So anything they want to do, DeFi, for example, as Akal are doing, they've all obviously got their app too, but they will be a parachain, right? So this is pretty much how it is. It connects to the network. And what's cool is if you are a parachain, you can also interact with other blockchains that are connecting through the Chainlink Oracle, right? Chainlink have actually built on Polkadot too. So they're actually going to be the ones that are going to allow that data interaction to happen. Right, they are a decentralized oracle, which means that you will be able to interact between other blockchains outside of the Polkadot ecosystem, so ones that are not parachains. And of course, you can interact between the parachains too. There's the event calendar here. Um, we've got the events here. Anything that's happening, start of a new staking session. So this is pretty cool. Uh, we've got the governance. Now, I did speak about the governance in the Polka wallet video that I did yesterday, which is the mobile wallet. It's pretty similar, but I think the mobile wallet is more user friendly. We've got the democracy section here. So we've got the AI and the NAY, uh, the ones that I actually spoke about in the Polka wallet video too. Exactly the same options here. They just look a bit different, obviously, because this is the desktop version. You can vote. Again, if you vote, you do need to... Uh, to lock dot for voting and it tells you how long you want to um, lock it for so it all depends on the voting on the voting balance that you want to have or the voting power that you want to have so if you only want to have 0.1 voting balance you don't need the lockup period you just basically vote and you use your dot so if you have a, a ton of dot then it doesn't really matter you don't want to lock it and you can just vote with 0.1 it'll make a difference every little counts you know that's how it is uh, up to a maximum of 6x voting, uh, which is the locked for 32x enactment, that is 896 days, so that is a whole lot. If you're really focused on voting for something, maybe with a smaller balance or something. Uh, when I say voting, this is voting for changes on the uh, Polkadot ecosystem, because it is self-sustainable after all. We've got the council here. Uh, Web3 Foundation, Jacko, these are all probably employees from Polkadot. We've got Gavin Wood here. He's got a, a, an emoji here with the beer. As you can see, he likes beer. Uh, <laughs> council. He's got council here as well. Prime voter, right? This is interesting. Current prime member, default voting. Joe is the prime member here. He's got 13.2 million dot. So all these guys have a lot of dot here, as you can see from the council. Uh, runners up. Also here. All these guys, uh, Polka Scan Foundation, 4 million dot, 675,000 dot, Acro. So these are people with a lot of money, right? If you think about it, I mean, they are staking a lot of dot here. And these are all the different votes that they've got as well. Uh, we've got the treasury too. So here you can vote within the treasury. These are the proposals. And these are the approved ones, as you can see here. You can submit a proposal, spending period, the next burn. There's some kind of burning going on there too. The tech community, of course, you can select that too. Now the developer section is obviously for developers. Uh, if you're not a developer and you're only interested in storing your dot to be able to stake or to be able to vote for those parachains to get tokens, you won't really care about these options, right? But they are here if you're interested in using JavaScript, for example, sign and verify, etc. There's the settings option too, the GitHub information and the wiki for more help if you're interested. So that is pretty much it. I mean, it's pretty straightforward here, as you can see. Uh, it takes a little bit to get used to it. I mean, you need to play around with it a bit, but uh, other than that, it shouldn't be too complex. I hope you found this video informative, and if you did, please don't forget to hit that like button. I'd very much appreciate it. And again, kind reminder, please subscribe if you're new. I'd very much appreciate that too, uh, if you're offering my, your support uh, for this channel. 
Thank you very much and I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.